Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com, and in this video here, I'm going to be explaining the best weapons in Kenshi and why. So, uh, we're going to go through a lot of my characters. I'm going to show you the weapons they're using, explain why they're using them in comparison to other weapons. And before all of that, though, I'm going to show you this page on my website right here. This is the, basically, it's going to be the same exact guide that I'm giving you in this video. It's just the written version of it. This also goes through all of my sources. Uh, there's a Reddit post that I found that basically goes through uh, weapon calculations. They sat there, whacked training dummies for hours, and then mathed out all of the weapons to show which ones are better than other ones. And I provide you with a bunch of other different information here, like uh, a list of all of the weapon tiers from worst to best, and basically everything in between. Also, at the bottom of the page here, I have this. Uh, I'm actually going to be reading this to you now because unlike best armor, in Kenshi, I don't have this information memorized, uh, so I, I still need to read my own work. So Guardless Katana, this is going to be one of the better sidearms you can get. It is cutting damage, so that is something to keep in mind. I'll explain why that matters in a little bit. It also says uh, right here why it matters. This is what I'm going to be talking about in uh, later on in the video. So uh, Guardless Katana, one of the biggest bonuses to it is it's very very light but like i said it is cutting jit this is a uh, a great defensive weapon it does do blunt damage if i am not mistaken let me check yes it does yeah it does all blunt it also has a great defensive bonus which uh is good very good it depends on what you uh what type of play style you prefer in this game i personally prefer a more tanky play style versus a more glass cannon Guardless Katana would be more glass cannon. Jit would be more tanky. So Spiked Club, this is, a, this is a blunt damage weapon. It also does uh, good bleed damage. One reason that uh, Spiked Club is worthwhile, or one reason that I would put this like above maybe Guardless Katana, is that it deals blunt damage. And like I said, actually I'll explain that now because that information is required for basically everything else that I want to explain. So I'm going to explain this with this page open here to show you, uh, well actually, let me show you a character that is probably more, apparently all of my characters have decently high dexterity, which is great because uh, usually that doesn't happen like that. So the reason that uh, blunt is arguably sometimes better than dex uh, cutting is because when you use a blunt weapon, it's going to base its damage off of your strength stat. When you use a cutting weapon, it's going to base the damage it deals off of your dexterity stat. So if we look at our stats in the bottom left here, you'll notice dexterity has a um, quite a bit of a penalty, and that is from the armor that I am wearing. When you wear heavy armor, dexterity is going to suffer from a penalty. And this is the issue with using um, cutting weapons. Because if your dexterity suffers from a penalty, it means you're going to deal less damage with a cutting weapon. So, essentially, using a cutting weapon on your tank is a bad idea because your tank is going to be wearing a lot of armor like this. Also, since your characters, uh, and I personally just wear heavy armor on basically all of my characters that melee because everybody takes damage in this game. And, uh... That is going to give you a penalty. As you can see, this armor has a penalty to dexterity. That's going to give you a penalty to all cutting weapons. So for that reason, it's arguably better to use a blunt weapon because blunt weapons base their, the damage they deal off of your strength. And not only is it easier to raise strength in this game, in order to raise strength, all you have to do is put a bunch of items on a character and run them back and forth at the start of the game. Basically, strength is one of the early things everybody raises. And, uh... Not only is it easier to raise strength, but there are less penalties you'll uh, suffer from wearing armor or anything like that to your strength. I think uh, strength, you only get a major penalty if you're massively encumbered. Let me check. A few of my characters are carrying around like a whole bunch of stuff needlessly. Hamu, where are you at, buddy? Shaoroikin, you're moving kind of slow. Nope, he doesn't have a strength penalty despite the fact that he's massively encumbered. As you can see, he's carrying around like 80 copper. So yeah, no strength, uh, no strength hit for him, despite the fact that he is massively encumbered. So that is one reason that I, uh, as more time goes on and the more I play this game, I start to prefer blunt weapons more for that reason. So short cleaver, 
This uh, has good damage and armor penetration, which means it would be very good for fighting heavy armored characters, but it has very short range. Um, I am unsure what range does in this game, because there are a few weapons, like uh, I think it's Ringed Saber, which has insanely good damage, but very short range. And I don't know how range plays a factor into things. So, if anybody wants to post a comment and illuminate me, be sure to let me know. So, Desert Saber. This uh, is a weapon with a good balances between defensive bonuses and attack bonuses. It's a good, well-rounded weapon for basically everything that, every sort of fighting. Uh, foreign Saber. This is the best defensive outdoors weapon. And... Hmm. I'm trying to think of how else to describe it. Best defensive outdoor weapon. And uh, that is that is important and something to keep in mind. Because, again, it depends on what you want out of your character. I have a few foreign sabers. Let me find them. There we go. Trakanon had one. Foreign saber. Again, it depends on what you want. Do you want a, a more uh, a more glass cannon-y damage dealing character? Or you want a character who can take a... Uh, take a massive beating and basically survive through nearly everything. That would be the benefit of doing a foreign saber. You can see it comes with an attack bonus too, but it has a great massive def defensive bonus. If we look at desert saber instead, this comes with a, a teeny, teeny weeny de defense bonus and quite a bit bonuses against certain types of enemies. Spiders, small spiders, bone dogs, skimmers, basically animals. Uh, and you'll, you'll fight those enemies often enough, more often at early game than late game. Late game, for the most part, you're fighting uh, skeletons, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, because there's weapons specifically made for skeleton smashing. But uh, in my opinion, and I realize I have to go back and uh, fix my spelling mistakes after this, because I spelled the traditional spelling of Saber instead of the, the spelling of Saber that is in the game, which is R-E instead of E-R. So, uh, mental note to go back and fix those at the end of this video. Let's see. Moving on from Foreign Saber and Desert Saber, we also have the Paladin's Cross. Best weapon you can use against robots. I'm pretty sure I have a few characters with Paladin's Cross. If not, uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I did. I should because I uh, came out to this area for a reason in Sun Earth's Dark. But yeah, if you, later in the game, once you decide to go into Sun Earth's Dark and then further into Ashlands, Doing a bunch of Paladin's crosses on your characters isn't the worst idea. It's actually a very good idea. Uh, it just has massive bonuses. I'll show you the weapon in-game in a second. Falling Sun, it is the best pure weapon damage in the game, and you can only buy the recipe from Scrap House, which is uh, an area next to a building next to Black Desert City with a vendor. And then Fragment Axe. This deals the most AoE damage of all weapons in the game. So, let me show you here crafting. Let's see. Weaponsmith. Paladin's Cross. Where are you at? Where are you at, buddy? Right there. Paladin's Cross. So, looking at this, you can see it has good armor penetration. So it'll get through basically all of the uh, crap that robots all of the armor robots are wearing. Decent defense bonus. Penalty indoors, which makes sense. It's a gigantic weapon. And it has a 50% damage bonus against um, skeletons. As you can see, too, it has basically an equal cutting and bo uh, blunt damage, which uh, is fine. And it, as you can see, it has a penalty against humans and animals, a 10% penalty. So uh, this is... Kenshi has a lot of weapons, and a lot of the weapons in this game have a variety. Like, some are great in specific situations and not the best in other situations. So the Paladin's Cross, it's really only good if you plan on fighting almost exclusively robots. So coming down, like I said, into the southeast portion of the world where all enemies are predominantly mechanical, it's a, you know, the best weapon you can possibly use. But when you're in basically any other part of the world, the sort of weapon you want to use would vary slightly. Like you might want to use, uh, well, I personally, I use sabers, either foreign saber or desert saber on as many of my characters as possible. Whenever I craft weapons for my entire team, I'm usually always making sabers for everybody. 
Uh, the only exception is sometimes I'll do Paladin's Cross when I know I'm coming down into this portion of the world. And if we go through some of my other characters, you can see Desert Sabers are my most frequently used weapon with Falling Suns being up there too. Like I said before, Falling Suns have the highest damage of any weapon in the game. Pure damage. Uh, there's other weapons that do like more um, bleed damage or whatever it may be. But Falling Suns, uh, very good damage bonus to Leviathans, which are a great enemy to train at on in the end game. Uh, damage versus beak things, which you're just going to be encountering basically everywhere throughout the majority of the game. And it comes with good cutting and blunt damage, so it gets a nice little split between your strength and deck stats. Uh, and you'll notice a lot of my other characters that are using different weapons, like this character is using a horse chopper. Why? Because it's me too quality. Um, and for that reason too, like, if you are faced with an option like, should you use this horse chopper despite the fact that it isn't on any of the best in slot weapons list, uh, because it is me too quality, or should you replace it with something that is less good that is on the best in slot weapon list? Like this Falling Sun, what, what, what would be better to use essentially, this Falling Sun or this horse chopper? And the answer is this horse chopper. Uh, and the reason for that is, me too quality weapons are usually so above and beyond better ever than any other weapon in the game like uh especially at the at the start of the game before you can start make making edge type one and edge type two quality weapons because like right now if all i can get is this mk3 or uh mk1 two or three weapon versus a me two quality weapon that is just you know better then uh, I'm, I'm basically always going to go with the Me Too quality weapon. It is just like five or six weapon levels higher than the other one, and it's just it's hard to argue that it would be uh, it wouldn't be worth using. So Hold Saber is another example here, Me Too quality. This one is also Me Too quality. I probably shouldn't have these weapons on the same character because he's only benefiting from one. I should put the other one on another character. But that is mostly what I do. I will stick to Desert Sabers on everybody on unless uh, I have a me too quality weapon of another kind. Then I'll usually switch to, you know, I'll use that me too quality weapon and then go from there, basically. But that is really all there is to it. That is basically the information dump that I can give you in the, pro in the course of this video. If I missed anything, got anything wrong, or you guys have something additional to add that I forgot, please let me know in the comments section below. And if this video helped you guys out, be sure to leave me a like because that helps me out. Aside from that, though, I will catch you guys around in future Kenshi videos. Peace.